What's new in Aviva Plant SCADA 2023 R2? I'm Nathan Slider, Product Manager for Plant SCADA here at Aviva. The biggest new feature for Plant SCADA 2023 R2 is a brand new alarm type now configurable in the product, which is termed the Double Point Status Alarm. This new alarm type is based upon the existing multi-digital alarm type. However, instead of multiple digital states received by the field device, this one is configured upon a single integer tag, which provides up to eight states that can be defined with custom naming conventions. Also, these custom state names will be reflected in the alarm and event subsystem so that it can be displayed to show up on all of the alarm pages, the sequence of events listings, as well as the process analyst tool, which is the trend client that can also display alarm content. It is limited to the driver runtime interface based protocols of which we'll cover in more details in the upcoming slides. First, let's talk about the use case of what a double point status alarm may be used for and why it is so important to have this integer signal from these field devices represented correctly by the SCADA system. Double point status signals were designed by the power industry vertical to help correctly identify the circuit breaker switch position in a substation and were needed due to the single contact signal that correctly identifies a circuit breaker switch position with safety status information included as part of that data packet. This data packet of electrical information is used within the protocol specific to power monitoring and control, which is typically the IEC 6850 protocol, the IEC 6870-104 protocol, as well as the DNP3 protocol, all of which PlantSCADA offers within its Power Connect driver pack. The issue with a single point status alarm is that this means there is only one digital state tag that can accurately timestamp the value at the source by these power devices and push this information up into the SCADA system. A single digital state would only represent if the switch was open or closed, meaning there is either voltage detection and the switch is closed, or there is no voltage detected and the switch is open on the input contact, which may not accurately reflect what is typically occurring in these circuit breakers. Think of a broken wire that was not detected or a contact that was not closed for a long time and after a while that contact may have been corroded so that after closing the contact mechanically there is no electrical contact input being reported by these power devices. This means that the receiving device would not be informed that the switch has been closed creating a safety risk in the electrical subsystem. So this is why electrical engineers came up with the solution of using double point status alarms from these field devices, which now correctly identifies the switch signal position through a double state condition. Whereas we can now represent the open and closed data message with additional status message information such as a broken wire status or information about a defective or corroded contact. And again, this occurs through a single integer tag from the power device which is timestamped at the source by these field devices and passed into the SCADA system through these power specific protocols of IEC 61850 and others identified. Plant SCADA is able to process any protocol that provides timestamping at the source via the driver runtime interface to inject the precise timestamp into the alarm and event subsystem for highly accurate alarm enunciation and sequence of events reporting. A double point status alarm can respond up to eight states in a field device that are represented in plant SCADA as a single integer tag. For each state, you can specify the following properties of state name, which is the name that identifies the condition that the state represents, and state type, which is the action that occurs when the device transitions to the defined state. The state type options are selected via the drop down for the properties field for this alarm type which will help to determine the behavior of how we want these alarms to appear in our system. If we select the alarm state type option, this will then show the double point status alarms on the active alarm pages. It will also log this information into the sequence of events subsystem, and then the state name will also appear in the state fields as defined in your project. Of course, it will also become visible on your alarm banners, alarm history pages, as well as the process analyst tool, which is the trend client that can display alarm information. We can also allocate this as an event state type option, which will only log the information into the sequence of events subsystem, and again the state name will also appear in the state field as defined in your project. However, the event state type will not show up on any of the configured alarm pages. Then there is the none state type option, which will not take any action by the system for display or logging. Also, remember we are using an integer tag as the source field tag for this state name and type information to be processed. So provided which value is received from the, the field device, 
zero through seven, then this will allow us to identify up to eight different states in the alarm and event subsystem. This means that this new double point status alarm feature can be used within other business verticals outside of power, such as in a conveyor control system, where we could describe the various operational or jammed states which could occur. That would help to provide a varying degree of blockage information back into the system. Again, this would occur via a single timestamp packet from these field device, potentially using the OPC UA protocol or other protocols that support timestamps within the protocol packet. Passing through the driver runtime interface for highly accurate alarm event data injection into the SCADA system. Let's take a look at the plant SCADA runtime and how this new feature works by opening up the example project that is provided with this release. We'll navigate to the new double point status alarms page where we can use this page to learn more about this new feature. We can use the controls to the left to see how the alarms respond in the system with the various alarm state types identified. As we trigger the alarms for open and close, it has the state type of event set, so it will only log alarms into the sequence of events listing at the bottom of the page. Now let's trigger the unknown and jammed alarms, which has the state types of alarm set. Here, we can see that the alarms show up as identified and are now displayed in the alarm banner at the top, the active alarms listing, as well as logging of the alarms properly into the sequence of events table at the bottom. Plant SCADA 2023R2 provides a new installation experience based upon a brand new installer technology. This install toolkit is modern to the times as it provides a simple to use installation experience with click through navigation for component level installation and modification as well as a brand new silent install capability, which provides for an unattended installation across many nodes in the system. This new modern installation framework simplifies the selection and installation of required components. It is built using Aviva's common technology stack for a similar installation experience, leveraging the Aviva install toolkit, which is used across the entire portfolio. The core plant SCADA components will appear as a single entry within the program and features list in the Windows control panel, making it much easier to modify, repair, or remove the application. Also, a brand new feature for the product is the fact the install can be executed via a command line, enabling support for an unattended silent installation. There are four pre-configured response files provided out of the box, which will help you to install all components, the components for a development workstation, components for a runtime only client, as well as components for a runtime only server. These pre-configured response files can be customized to any of the features needed for the installation, as well as options to automatically configure items in the configurator, which typically occurs post-installation. Now let's take a look at this new installation feature and how this now works within PlantSCADA 2023R2. The product is now installed and we are ready to begin developing our Plant SCADA 2023 R2 project. The kernel now works when running as a service. This means that users can now open the kernel for access via the Runtime Manager and will be prompted for credentials. The legacy Plant SCADA kernel user has been deprecated and now a new kernel access property has been added to the role definition which now controls the access. This improves security for kernel access which is typically used for the diagnostic purposes, is now accessible via the Plant SCADA Runtime Manager. As you right-click on the various processes running in the system, it will display an option to select the kernel for access. Then, a new login prompt screen will appear, allowing you to put in the correct credentials. This change now takes place by restricting kernel access to the various security roles configured in the system. Each security role now contains a drop-down selection for full access, read-only access, or no access into the kernel. This also means that the legacy kernel user has been deprecated and will need to be migrated during an upgrade process. Unique Equipment IDs A unique ID can be applied to any equipment and equipment types which can be used for consistent identification for integration with future software releases. Unique IDs for equipment are typically referred to as the Globally Unique Identifier, or GWID. They are used for consistent identification for integration with future software releases. The global unique identifiers are ad automatically generated whenever the equipment is added, plus the migration tool now includes an option to create these unique IDs for variable tags and equipment during the upgrade process. 
These future use cases would provide for integration with version and control software or tighter integration with the Aviva Historian as you can now change the name fields in the SCADA system while auto-binding the new names to the GUIDs stored in the Historian. Equipment Update Speeds This feature enhancement to the Equipment Editor provides tag and equipment generation and update speed improvements which showed immense speed improvements over previous releases. The performance of the equipment update speeds is quite significant as the time it takes to generate tags and equipment is much faster in this release. The equipment editor is an integral part of the Plant SCADA project development within the Plant SCADA Studio. When it is used within the, app, the large applications comprised of 12,000 pieces of equipment and 50,000 tags, it would previously take three hours to configure into the database. But in Plant SCADA 2023R2, this now only takes seven minutes. In a smaller application comprised of 1,000 pieces of equipment and 9,000 tags, this would previously take six minutes to configure into the database, but now only takes less than a minute in this new release. The new online help system is a browser-based tool that means documentation for PlantSCADA is ready for distribution on emerging documentation platforms, including cloud-based environments. PlantSCADA is now aligning towards the Aviva Help Standard, which is a browser-based tool that allows any installed Aviva product to share a common platform for the delivery of product information. The online version of PlantSCADA will be the most up-to-date version of the help located at docs.aviva.com in alignment with the rest of the portfolio. Of course, it is still accessible local to the PlantSCADA 2023 R2 installation from the Windows Start menu, along with any other Aviva products installed locally, or directly accessible from the Plant SCADA Studio icons and shortcut keys. Support for 64-bit Microsoft Excel. The Project DBF add-on tool has been updated to support 64-bit versions of Microsoft Excel. The Project DBF add-on tool utility has been around for many years, but now it fully supports Microsoft Excel 64-bit, which means this add-on tool will now show up as a toolbar within Excel which allows you to select the plant SCADA project you are configuring and then select the appropriate table for configuration such as equipment, tags, alarms, trends, or just about any configuration file in the application. Then as the modifications are completed, you can save the changes which are directly applied in your plant SCADA project. Aviva continually enhances the cybersecurity posture of the product in every release and captured as a feature due to the significant development which occurred within this area to make the product much more secure for these critical operations. Some other minor enhancements for PlantSCADA 2023R2 were mainly operational in nature. There was effort around improving the performance of the new web content object for standard graphics in the Graphics Builder, which was introduced in the previous release. This feature allows you to embed HTML5 content in a more modern container and now provides some additional new parameters which were introduced to help throttle the memory usage of these processes. Also, enhancements to the common components occurred, such as the Platform Common Services, the OPC UA server, Operations Control Logger, and the Aviva Enterprise Licensing System, all of which are now using the latest builds in alignment with the rest of the portfolio. A new kernel task default setting was improved to ensure you no longer get the out of kernel tasks error message, along with usability improvements to the graphics builder objects and some updated font selections in the alarm list genie. The team increased the Psycode stack window buffer, which helps with some user identified coding protection issues. And wrapping it up with the final feature with improvements to the trend backfilling component for projects with large trend counts and redundancy enabled to ensure faster backfill processing in the system occurs. That wraps up the what's new for Plant SCADA 2023 R2 content for this release.